Hi, this is Mrs. Homer, and we're going to do a quick review of atoms and learn a little bit about bonding to get you ready for our biochemistry unit. And we know that everything in the universe is made of atoms, um, and that the atoms are the smallest unit of matter. And then atoms themselves are made up of even smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons, which are also made of smaller particles. Those protons and neutrons, those are found in the nucleus of the atom, which is in the center. And this uh, nucleus will have a positive charge because all the protons are in there. The electrons, those are negative, and they're going to be in these energy levels. Sometimes we call those orbits. Um, but something really important to understand about electrons is that if there's eight electrons in the outermost level, an atom is considered stable, which kind of means it's boring because it doesn't react. It's non-reactive. And so if you have eight you are stable. Sometimes this is called the octet rule. You might hear that in a video or read it in some of the notes later in this unit. So eight is a stable atom. Unstable atoms have less than eight. So they have seven or two, but they do not have eight. And if you don't have eight, you need to do something to get to eight so that you can be stable. And so what they do is they react. So any atom that's not having eight valence electrons is going to react to try to get eight in the outermost level. And when we say react, sometimes we think of things exploding or bubbling or changing color, but really what's happening um, when things react is that atoms are just forming bonds and attaching to different uh, other atoms, uh, like in this uh, little GIF here. So we have to talk about covalent bonding because this is going to be important in water as well as in DNA, which we're going to learn about in a little bit. In terms of covalent bonding, um, this happens when an atom doesn't have eight valence electrons, and in order to get eight, it shares electrons with another atom. And so when electrons are shared between two different atoms, uh, a covalent bond is formed between them. So if you notice here in this picture, um, these are two atoms, two chlorine atoms, and in the middle, these orange electrons, they're just being shared between the two atoms um, so that they are both stable. And that sharing of electrons right there is what we call a covalent bond. And this now makes them stable. So this is one of our vocab words that we're going to kick off the biochemistry unit with. It's a covalent bond. It happens when two atoms share electrons to become stable. All right. Oh, yeah. Hope you have that in your head because now we're going to make it just a little bit more difficult. We're going to learn something called a polar covalent bond. So we've already tackled that when we're sharing electrons, it's forming a covalent bond. And that's a, a strong bond. Um, however, if atoms are the same size, they share those electrons evenly. Everybody's happy and those electrons spend the same amount of time around both atoms. However, if the atoms are different sizes, and this happens all the time with hydrogen, the electrons actually get fair, uh, shared unfairly, meaning the larger atom gets the electrons for longer than the smaller atoms, winning the tug of war with the electrons. Why is that important? Because a polar covalent bond happens when those electrons that are being shared are shared unfairly. I have a little saying that I like to say to help me remember, it's covalent bonds share, but if you share unfair, you're a polar bear or you're really a polar covalent bond. And this is going to become really important with water because it's going to lead water to have really amazing properties. So again, a covalent bond is just when we share electrons and a polar covalent bond is when we share those electrons unfairly. 
when you have a polar covalent bond you will actually start to see positive and negative sides to the molecule and so this is an example of a water molecule an oxygen and two hydrogen and you'll notice because of this polar covalent bond oxygen kind of takes on a negative feel because it gets those electrons for longer and hydrogen takes on a positive feel this happens all the time when hydrogen forms polar covalent bonds with other molecules. Hydrogen becomes positive. And that is going to be key to water's uh, really unique properties. So when you have a polar covalent bond, your molecule takes on a slight charge, positive and negative. So it's positive over here, negative over there. And so water is a polar molecule because it has polar covalent bonds. Water is made of oxygen and two hydrogen, and those hydrogens are held to the oxygens with covalent bonds. But because oxygen is so much larger, oxygen takes the electrons for a longer period of time. That gives oxygen the feeling of being negative and hydrogen the feeling of being positive. So we have a polar covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen here and a polar covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen here. So that's all uh, that you need to know for now. So again, two big words here are the covalent bond when we're sharing and the polar covalent bond when we share unfairly and then to understand that when we have those po polar covalent bonds like we do in water the whole water molecule is going to have a side that's slightly negative and slightly positive that's it for today. Um, we'll get a little bit more into water and its amazing properties the next time I see you.